So it's Friday and it's we're still in November. It's getting cold. <laughs> Today I had to wear a sweater along with my jacket. It's just rainy. A lot of rain um for the past few days. But um just wanted to share a little bit about what's going on as it relates to our school system and this COVID, how COVID has affected us so, so badly. I teach in an inner city school system, in an urban school system. Um, but we know that poverty just, it's what it is. Um, it's not easy. The kids come in and as a teacher, you have to have the heart to know that it's not just about teaching them ABCs and one, two, threes, but also to make sure that little needs are being taken care of. Um, they come in and they get breakfast, which is great, and they get lunch. And um, in my area, all kids eat for free so they don't have to worry about finding money to pay but the reality of it too is that a lot of these kids coming in that's the only meal they get for the day the lunch the breakfast and the lunch that they get at school now we have been doing um in person and remote learning and as I mentioned before, I teach three classes in person. Um, each class is roughly about 14 kids each. And two virtual classes. Starting Monday though, we're going hybrid. Hybrid means that we're going to be teaching um, a couple of days in school and then three days out and so all the kids will go on they have another it's different modules different models um for us we chose a model where because we have less than 15 kids in our classrooms we do not have to have an a and b session so we are going to have just two days mondays and tuesdays in person and then Wednesday, they would have the deep cleaning of the school building so nobody would be in the building. And then t Thursday and Friday, the B students would come in. But we don't have enough students to split A and B. We only have enough for A. So they'll come in Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're teaching virtually. Um... And as much as that sounds glorious and sounds exciting because even though we will be in the building Thursday and Friday, um, but the kids will be home. We will not have children in the building. But I just, I was coming home today and I was thinking of how the ones who really need the breakfast and the lunch if things are going to be in place for that so they can still get their free food. I don't know how it's going to work because I know parents have been hit hard. I have spoken to some parents who are just beside themselves because in the spring when they started, they lost their jobs. You know, some of them was they weren't making enough as it was. And now we're looking again, the, 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 the virus is spiking again. People are getting it again. People are dying again. And so we don't know where it's going to end. Are we going to have another shutdown? I mean, mentally, a lot of people have lost it. A lot of people are depressed. A lot of people are just going through some hard changes. Um, for the past few couple months, I've been teaching my virtual learners. And it was just sad when you put the assignments and sometimes two kids um complete the assignment and turn it in sometimes one student 
And you're talking about some of the classes are 15, 16 kids in the class. And yesterday I said to the kids, I gave a quiz. And I said, this is the second marking period. We need to see grades. I'm here. If you need me, talk to me. When they come on, sometimes they just hide. They don't want to. They don't want people to see them. But then I gave them a little lifeline. I said, you know what? I really just want to see you guys succeed. I know it's not easy. And we had a big talking session. We talked for about 20 minutes out of class time. Just talk. And one little kid said, this is one of the best classes because we just got to talk about everything. And then I stopped and I think I thought about it and said, yep, yeah, this is going to be what we do from now on. Just talk about regular things. I even mentioned my channel because it has the craft stick things for the students. And right away they were telling me, Miss Summit Black, I see the, the, the craft sticks here. We want to make these. It was just so refreshing. Um, they had questions about the channel. They had questions about the things there. And I thank God that I had created a channel where you know, it, it was edifying. You know, like anybody could go and see it. And so I felt good even today when they were mentioning it. Um, and I also said to them, look, if some of the work is, is a little hard, I am going to set it up for you so that you can see the math in what you need to do. And if you have to use a calculator, use it and, and, and so that you can, you can get some hope that it will give you some confidence. Practice the skills, work with small digits. And I gave them some examples. And Believe me, when I finished my last class this evening, I had 10 kids who turned in work. And I said, my God, this has been an epiphany. Because you're teaching, you're giving notes, you're explaining things. But because they were in another place, it seems, they weren't motivated. They weren't encouraged. So I have to give God the glory that... He, you know, in, in whatever form, he just brought it to my attention that it doesn't have to be just, um, I did the videos for them so they can use that after I'm, I'm not the when I'm not there so they could use the videos to help them um, understand. And with the explanation, we have Khan Academy, K-H-A-N, um, which... It's a good it's a good learning place because it does explain the work for them. So I would assign a couple of YouTube videos from that to help them with the explaining and they could stop the video and practice then start it. You know, they can manipulate the video so they could have access to the work. But they weren't interested. But today we had a great day and we talked about going hybrid so next week even though they will still be online for all their classes they they um it's going to be a little bit different so we're moving forward i know that it's not easy i know that parents are going through a lot of struggles i try to reach out to them as much as i can I tried to still do my birthday thing when the kids' birthdays, I'd give them a card and five dollars. And and that just made them excited. <laughs> um but the little things that we can do, I do invest in the fruit snacks. It's not candy, it's fruit snacks. So I would make sure some of them I'll give a little handful when they're going home. So they'll have that, you know, just to keep them going. And, and just share with their little siblings. And so we do all the little things we can do just to make this time, you know, doable, tolerable, um, hopeful, whatever terms we want to use. So we think of the parents, their housing issues. I mean, even though they were saying that, okay, the landlords couldn't evict them. But on the other hand, landlords have to pay their mortgage. So it's a catch-22. It's one thing to have 
tenants sitting, and then you have those tenants who they manipulate the situation where they can pay their rent, but because the, the governor asked them not to put people out during the COVID pandemic, then some of them just think that they shouldn't pay their rent. So it's a catch-22, and it's tough. And when this is all over, whatever rent was not paid for those landlords who worked with and 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 was you know able to to manage those monies have to be paid so it's a catch-22 when you have no work or you 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 know your hours are cut or it, it's just hard all around it's just hard but let us just keep on hoping i think we can hope um, the sun still shines, rain comes, um, birds are singing. For not us now, the winter is coming. Today was a little colder. Um, so we know it's coming. But there's hope yet. And we have to find the hope so that we can keep our sanity. Because once we start stressing out, and once we start, you know, when if you can fix something, it's one thing. But when you're fighting a losing battle, then it's another thing because it only becomes harder. So I don't know how to say don't stress because every situation is different. But I'm just saying, please find a way to be hopeful. Um, find a way to, I don't know, laugh some sing a lot <laughs> i find that music is beautiful it, I, as i said i i have so I'm, i am so vested in, in in lively music i grew up with hymns we sing hymns in church we sing hymns we sing hymns i started in the moravian church as a young girl then i got baptized at 17 in the seventh day adventist church all hymns but now i'm appreciating the more lively music because it does something to your spirit. It lifts you, it lifts you up. It, it makes you feel good. And so, as they say, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let us find some way to make joyful noises so that our spirits can be lifted up. And as, we, as, as our spirits are lifted up, we hope we can lift other people's spirits up. So again... It's, 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 it's Friday, um, and it's just what it is. It's Friday, and Sabbath has started, so we'll just give thanks and ask the Lord that as he blesses us, that we'll continue to be a blessing to others in whatever shape or form, in a word, bless somebody with a song. Bless somebody with a little food. Bless somebody in whatever way you can bless them. Everybody's need is different. So in whatever way you can bless them, just be a blessing to somebody. Because it is hard times and we all need to be encouraged. So, it's Miss Bev <laughs> saying... Take good care of yourselves and walk good. <laughs>